Hi, I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. Welcome to my sewing room. Do you recognize this fabric behind me? I did a quilt last week, the all blocked in pattern. But what I did is I took the leftover pieces from the fat quarters used to make the quilt, and I want to show you how to use your fat quarters in quilts and then take the leftover pieces and make something else with them. You don't necessarily need a pattern. You're just putting blocks together, making squares, and then putting those squares together. But as it started, I got the one block in the center done, and then I did the other two, and I thought, wow, this will make a really great quilt bag. And it does. It looks wonderful. But then by the time I start getting all the pieces together, I've got another quilt top. So essentially what we have here are some awesome tips that I think you're really going to enjoy. How to use your leftover fat quarters from your quilt patterns and make something new without a pattern. So let me get started. I, I didn't have a lot of fabric left over, but it's amazing how far your fat quarters can go when you really utilize each and every piece. So let's get started. Here's the quilt that I made last week. It's the All Blocked In pattern. Um, it's a free download, and I'll make sure that the link is down below for you. But for a baby quilt, it only takes six fat quarters. What I want to show you, though, is how to take those leftover fabrics in order to make more with it. Um, I like to create blocks out of the leftover pieces, not necessarily a specific block by a pattern, but just use the pieces I have. So let me show you how I do this. I had some favorite pieces that I really wanted to bring out into the back, and what I decided to do is take all the fabrics that I had and make a backing. Now, ordinarily, I'll just make some random blocks and, and I'll use them in a quilt, maybe a scrap quilt. But this one just worked out so perfectly. And I had enough fabric to make the backing for the same quilt out of all the same fabrics. I did add one extra fabric and I can't even find it here, but there is one extra. And it's worked out really, really well. So I want to share with you how you can take your scraps to make individual blocks. You don't need a pattern. You don't need a pattern whatsoever. All you do is start with the center, and I used a five inch square because that's easy, and then I add pieces around there. I took the trim, the um, sashing that I used on the front, and brought it around to the back as well, and then I used this uh, bright, it's almost a fuchsia. It doesn't really come out that way in the camera, but it's almost a fuchsia color, and it carries through with all these colors and it goes great. So I had enough of this fabric to create three of these blocks and each one is a little different. I kind of did the same thing, but not all the pieces were the same size. So I adjusted some of these widths here and there, but that's okay. This is a fat quarter quilt. Essentially it's a back, but it's a quilt made with scraps from fat quarters. And the idea is to use those pieces effectively and and uh, create something really wonderful with them. And then all I did on the edge is I took the wider cuts that were left over and put it on the, uh, the, the side along the edge. So we have these, these three blocks, which I offset. I didn't want to have them all in a straight row. So I went ahead and took the strips that I had cut and cut some narrow pieces to make these come out away from that border so that they're staggered. There's so much that you can do with your leftover fat quarter pieces. From creating actual blocks without a pattern, and I'm going to show you that next. I'm going to show you exactly how I put this together. Because you see how neat this looks? I really love it. These three pieces are, are different fabrics, but I used three fabrics to go around four sides. I think it's really a neat idea. It kind of gives it a, it's all just a little bit asymmetrical. Nothing really lines up perfectly, which is also very forgiving when you're putting it together. I needed an extra bit of width, so I tucked some of this in here. And I've got the border on this side, just like I do on the front. It sort of mimics that. And it's going to make a great quilt back. Actually, this could make a quilt front. I don't know. I. I started making out blocks, then I decided, oh, this will make a great quilt back, 
Now I'm thinking it just might be a quilt top by itself. So until I decide which way we're going to go, I do want to show you how to how to make these blocks because you can be so versatile with your fat quarter pieces. So let's take a look and I'm going to show you some great tips to use your fat quarter scraps. When I cut this particular quilt, I, I had a number of different pieces left over. And I want to show you how to use this in order to make a quilt block without a specific pattern. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take some of these and one of the key things, the reason I'm talking about squares is we're going to start with a five inch square. And when you start with a five inch square, whatever you add to the top and bottom, you also need to add to the sides in order to keep that square shape. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, we'll have some of these. That one is cut wider. I want to stay with the same, the same uh, width, which these are each two inches. So maybe we'll do that one right there and this one over here. So that's kind of fun. So what I'm going to do here is let's take these two and cut them down to five inches because we need that five inches in order to make our block. We'll do this one and we're going to go five inches here. Whoops. No, nope. these are all pre-cut, so there's no selvages. I was just checking. I thought I had a selvage there. And let's see, there's five inches right there. So these two pieces will be on the top and bottom. Now, I have two inches here. This is a two-inch piece. Now, remember, after the, uh, the seam allowance, they're going to be an inch and a half. So this will be more like a narrow frame around this centerpiece. Now let's see, I want to cut this so that it's going to be the full length. I could certainly come in with, let's say, another one like this and do it half and half. But I think I'm just going to go ahead with the long pieces and, and uh, make it pretty quick. But we have to think about the dimension. This is a five inch square. It's going to finish at four and a half inches. This is a two inch width that'll finish at an inch and a half. So we have four and a half, and then we have an inch and a half and an inch and a half, which is three. So four and a half plus three is seven and a half inches, plus an extra half inch for your seam allowance. Now, if it's easier for you, what I say, did I say seven and a half or eight? I can't remember. Four and a half plus a half is eight. So there's five, six, seven, eight. Um, back to where we were. I can't do math and anything else at the same time. If it's easier, just sew your, your uh, three blocks in the middle together and then measure it and do your outside pieces. And that way you're going to make sure that you have a, um, a nice square block. So what do we say? We went with eight inches on this. So now we're going to have this cute little block almost like a, uh, a log cabin where you have a center block and then you have stripes that go around. But instead of these overlapping in the corners, we're going to take two long pieces down each side. That means less seams to match and it goes together quickly. The other advantage to a block like this, because we have these side seams this way, we have these pieces, if I put this same block on the top and the bottom, we have to match these seams. But if I turn it and put it here, then I'm going to have blocks with a, a long strip across here. So I'm not matching those seams. So that's something else to think about. But this is a really quick block. I'm going to sew it up and show it to you. Here is our perfect little eight inch square. It'll finish at seven and a half inches. And that's a good size. We can make a quilt with that, especially if you're doing like a scrap quilt and you're just going to mix a lot. But I like my squares to be a bit bigger because when I go to put my blocks together to make my finished quilt, I don't want to deal with a lot of small pieces. I prefer to have large, which is why a lot of times I will take multiple blocks and put them into a four patch and then put the big piece together. It's just a preference for me. Um, I find it more manageable to work with. So let's talk about what our options are here. I think I would like to do 
a little narrow white strip around this and then we'll add some more to the outside. Now I only have three colors of this fat quarter, but that's okay. I can, I can repeat it on one side. I don't have any problem with that. I tend to like the asymmetrical look and I'm going to cut it at an inch and a half. And let's see, we'll cut it here. There's an inch and a half all the way across. So one of these is going to, yep, I got it. One of these may be duplicated. Let's see, how long are they? 15 to 29, so they're 14 inches. So I don't have enough for two of them to go across one. So what I may decide to do is just sew this on the bias like this, like you would a, um, I can't get the corner there, like you would for your binding, and sew it like this, and then just put the pieces around and let them fall where they may. And that way I'll have plenty to go around. So if I do this around my edges, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And then I can bring this piece in. And I would probably put this around all four sides. And that'll kind of finish it off. It'd be a, a fun block. And then as I do more, if I want to match this, this outer piece would be a different fabric. So when they come together, the side-by-side -side fabrics are going to be different colors, but yet each one is going to have a frame which provides some balance. So I'm going to go ahead and first sew this together. And what I'll do is I'm going to take my one and a half inch piece. I'm going to take the second one. Again, these have all been cut so the salvages are off. And I'm going to sew it this way. So when I sew this seam from that corner to this corner, see that on the inside corner? When we open this up, we get this nice straight piece with a diagonal. Now, you can go ahead and put them together butt the ends together straight, but I think that becomes more visible, it's more stark, it can be a little more bulky in one spot. The reason I like this is as you're looking at it, it's on a diagonal, so your eye sort of follows that line, but you don't pick up the distinction of a solid, two solid pieces coming together. It's just, just the way my eyes work. Maybe you see it differently, maybe it's not important, but that's what I like to do. So let me go ahead and sew these three pieces, and then we'll come back and we'll cut our strips, make a border, get the second border, and I'll show you how this non-pattern block is going to turn out. So I now have three strips sewn together, and they're on a diagonal seam, and this is how I'm going to put it together. And well, I think I have enough. One with the seam allowance, I'm pretty sure I measure that I have enough here. I have a lot hanging off the edges. But essentially, this is what I'm looking for. And quite frankly, if I come up short, I have some other small pieces right here I can just add to it. But what I like about this is that when we're piecing this, it's going to wrap around the corner and then it's going to come up here. It's going to wrap around the corner. So that fabric now is kind of continuing around the corner. And in doing so, it, it kind of balances out. It kind of makes it look a bit asymmetrical, yet it's all the same size. So let me go ahead and put these in. Actually, I'm going to start right here. And in order to have it wrap around, I want to measure it as I go, because I'm going to want to sew it in the proper order so I don't get them mixed up. And here we are. This block is all set to go for the next round. Now look at this. Here's an interesting situation. Um, there's a couple things I can do here where this corner stops right there. I can Let's see, I'm going to go this way. I can bring this over because I need, let's see, this is not, I think I need 10 and a half inches over here, which I seem to have a pretty, pretty good amount. So I could come in here and maybe cut some of this off so I get this corner and then bring this one down. But 
I think, just for the sake of this is where we are and this is an interesting kind of a resolution, is we're just going to cut it at 9 inches, um, just like the other. So this was 8 to match the square. Then we have 9, then we'll 9 across the top and then we'll cut the longer piece for that last one. Here's our finished 10 inch block with a nice black and white border. And now I'm going to put another round. I'm going to use this two and a half inch and I want to use it on all four sides. Now this measures two and a half inches by the width of fabric, which is roughly 42. I need 10 inches for each side, but I also need that two inches to overlap to go around. So a 44 inch piece isn't going to work. The width of fabric is too short. So I can either add another piece of this and create that, or I can use these smaller pieces that were left over. These are some two and a half inch blocks that um, I had left, and these will be actually quite perfect to add into this. Let's see, we can put maybe this one here. And which of these do I want? So I'm going to go with this one. Actually, I'll put this down here just to kind of balance the two pink ones. So now I'm going to cut four 10-inch pieces. They'll go inside these cornerstones. I'll sew one to a block, one to a block, one to a block. Or actually, yeah, one period. And then I'll sew those two together at once. So let me show you how this is going to finish out. All right, my corner stones are set and ready to go. Now, you may wonder why I didn't just use a single piece up here the way I did down here. And the reason being is by adding a corner stone here, I match up this seam, and then if I have some flexibility there, that's fine. I can adjust it and do the same thing here. I'm going to match this corner, and then once I take up these seams, of course, it's going to match better. But then I have more adjustment to work with and I don't have to worry so much about precise accuracy. That will come over here when I get to this point. So this will be the one that will really tie it all together. These seams will need to match, but by doing it this way I can get it done quickly, get through it, and then worry about this at the very end. With all the sashing added to our block and the cornerstones, we have this great 10, 14 inch finished block, which is wonderful. Now, I was thinking of making something out of this individually, but now that I've made this, I'm going to make two more, stack one on top, one on the bottom, so I have three together, and I'm going to use this to make the back of the quilt. Um, these are the same fabrics in the front, and I think it's going to be a great, great finish. So there you have it, a quick way to make a block without a pattern and just using all those leftover pieces from your fat quarter. So I hope you give this a try. Thanks for watching.